Uh, Tom hasn't joined us yet, so I'm going to stand in. I'm going to be the stand in Tom. So uh, I'm Sean Roberts. Oh, sorry, we're going to switch. <laughs> uh, I'm a VP of Dev at Aconda, um, formerly at VMware. Um, I've been in, well, before I start doing that. Um, so we're each going to introduce ourselves real quick. I, um, it's a, uh, I've been uh, organizing the San Francisco uh, Bay Area user groups for about two and a half years. So. Yeah, I'm uh, Erwan Galen. Um, I'm organizing the French user group, uh, and I work for uh, Red Hat. Hi, I'm Kavit Munshi, and I run the Indian user group, and we've been around for the last three and a half years. And it's glad to, just glad to be here. Thanks. Hi, I started with, uh, with some people, uh, the Chinese user group in uh, 2012. Uh, I'm Akira, uh, Akira Yoshiyama uh, from Japan, and uh, I'm uh, oh. here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I uh, usually uh, I uh, I mm, I maintain uh, our uh, user group uh, homepage. G'day, I'm Tristan from Australia, OpenStack, um, founder of the user group down there. Um, we're almost at a thousand people, so if you know anyone from Australia that's not in the user group, I think we're at 993, so <laughs> if you give us another seven, we can make the thousand before the end of the summit. Yeah. We can all uh, sign up if you help us move there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my name is Marton Kish, and I'm responsible for the European uh, uh, user groups together with Erwan. And I'm located in Hungary. Yeah, so I, I think Martin's gonna do do, do a presentation, right? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to show some slides because we did a huge work during the last one year. We nearly finished this uh, OpenStack uh, community portal, and we can see the entire user group presence all around the world. So it seems to be that we have a lot of members. And if you are going to the groups.openstack.org site, uh, you can join with your actual openstack.org user account. And uh, basically, if you are a user group organizer and you not found yourself help here, please uh, register yourself, and we can uh, assign you to your own group. And, and basically, the goal of this, this site that we can provide a lot of guides and tips for the user groups, how to organize them, how can they do different things. And uh, of course, we can enlist a lot of uh, user group events. Um, and uh, you can track the site activity. For example, the user group owners can post uh, uh, different content to the site. And, and it is a very good platform. We can. Uh, uh, develop in the future and use for different uh, user group uh, uh, related uh, things. So basically, the one of the huge advantage of this site because most of the groups initially were registered in different social networks or meetup.com or other places that we can provide the center place for for the entire user group activity. And uh, one of the huge advantage that we can gather some information and know the status of the the community and and know the size. And I have uh, a very surprising number. This is the the actual <laughs> size of the OpenStack community all around the world. I think it is a very impressive number. And uh, if we are seeing a little bit deeper. We can see the numbers uh, per continent. So it's obvious that uh, North America is the largest uh, community. And, uh, and Europe is, and Asia is almost identical in size. And uh, of course, so South America is not so represented, and Africa is not so active. But I think it, it repre represents the status of the industry. And if we see the growth rate, um, of the user groups. Uh, we are trying to join all of the groups uh, into this uh, database. 
So we can see that uh, we have uh, 47 new members daily, and it means around 1,400 uh, new members joins uh, to the OpenStack community. So I, th I think those are very impressive numbers, but basically we cannot see anybody because uh, we are tracking the progress level of the different user groups, and uh, we have some user groups uh, where we don't have a specific contact, but for example, I know some guy who is doing that, uh, something there, for example, in Cyprus, um, so we try to reach the 100% process level. We are ar around 68%, uh, um, so it, it is not so bad. So you can see those data from that aspect. So can, can I ask a question? Um, so what was the, could you go a little bit of the evolution of how um, the group's portal started and what the initial ob objective was? Just at a very high level. Might be kind of informative. Yeah, yeah, basically we wanted to move all of the information and data of the user groups into a central place uh, based on a real open source solution. So I think it, this is the basic goal of OpenStack that we, we will try to solve the problems using open source software. And, and the site is based in Drupal, so it is uh, entirely following the development standards of, of other open, open stack projects. So if anyone like to join, feel free. We are using the same policies, so anyone can contribute anything to this portal. Basically, we have some challenges here. For example, um, we plan the multi-language site, and we have some basic translations. But as the translation solution is, is changing in the OpenStack community, we will, we will adopt this new uh, translation tool as a Z Zonata or something. It is the, the name of that. But we're still supporting the other social tools, right? Yeah, of course. So this portal doesn't mean that you need to leave the meetup.com because uh, we connected uh, this site using a REST API with the meetup.com. So if you have a, a very active community who is tied to meetup.com, feel free to use meetup. But if you are launching a new user group, you feel free to use this, uh, this tool. And it means that you do not need to pay a yearly or monthly fee for, for meetup.com guys. It's true. This costs a little bit of money. Um, you guys got any questions or something you want to talk about the group's portal? Uh, I, I see the the uh, the data the member data is uh, grabbed from the OpenStack database or from the Meetup database. Yeah, we are fetching it daily from the Meetup.com database. Really, because um, in Chinese, uh, in China we have uh, several. Uh, we have four groups. I think they uh, if add up the uh, almost three thousand people almost. So I, I see the Asia and Pacific, the, the, the total number is 7,000. So maybe a mistake? I don't know. Yeah, we can check it after the uh, okay. session. Cool. I think all the, all the groups need to register with the uh, portal, I guess. Because uh, I think we've got around 3,000 3, plus members in India. And if you've got 3,000 <laughs> plus in China, then the number doesn't really add up. Yeah, yeah, basically this jump is when we added the Chinese user groups. Ah, uh, okay. I started right. to collect the data. That, that's so a good it is, it is represented though. Yeah. Sorry. That's a good point though. Uh, so uh, there, there are a number of groups out there that are, um, you know, they're publishing themselves through social media, but they haven't actually um, kind of uh, yeah. been as involved with the OpenStack community as, uh, um, as others. So they're, they're possibly not, um, uh, even known mm -hmm. or well known by us, and, um, and we've dug around and found quite a few. But I'm sure there's there's gaps. So uh, yeah. as we find them as ambassadors, we should. Uh, mm. uh, I think I think the I think the whole idea is to bring them an in into the fold and try and basically make uh, make sure the messaging is correct across all the groups, and we are all pushing in the same direction. Because I found that there are 
I, I think there was a group in India that was uh, organizing events on around the same time as the main group was doing in the same cities, and it was kind of dividing and uh, dividing the user base. I, and we we kind of uh, the process we used was was we actually made one of the guys the an yeah. organizer in the main Indian group and said, look, just join us rather than. So I think if if we could if we know of groups out there and uh, if any of you know of groups that are not a part of the portal, may please ask them to join or contact an ambassador, and we can help onboard them with the official user group process. Yeah, that's a good segue to the next yeah. topic. Good work. <laughs> yeah, and ba basically this is a it was a real life example. So user groups are not static entities, and and we saw a lot of uh, issues that we need to solve. For example, there was this, this Vietnam issue. When, when they st like to start a new user group next to an existing one, and and I think the similar happened in Portland or somewhere in no North America. But I I think it is a normal thing and nothing wrong with that. So so it is a it is a standard evolution of the user groups because they are communities. So uh, hey Tom, um, hey. so th th that's actually a good point to bring up. Um, so the the user groups are really um, you know, they're very organic, and um, there's, there's nothing to keep anybody from creating their new user group in any community. In fact, there's, um, there's three different OpenStack user groups in San Francisco Bay Area right now. Um, and they, the two other ones, they kind of started their own ones because they didn't really know in some way how to join, which, you know, it's kind of, I guess, a partial failing on myself that I didn't, um, I didn't reach out to them enough. But um, but sometimes they have a slightly different agenda, and that's you know that's okay. I mean you know whatever. So um, so the the user groups are not owned by the foundation. Um, but what we're trying to do with uh, the portal, and Tom can speak to this a little bit more about the strategy. I'm just kind of speaking with Tom's voice. But um, but also uh, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to give them uh, kind of a warm hug and uh, give them some services and some ideas about what we've done. Um, so that they can be uh, more effective in their, you know, when they have enough energy, they want to spend their time to gather a bunch of people together and and uh, work or rant about OpenStack. That uh, we help them so that they can do that. Right. Say something or no? No, you don't. Have to I, say I that. think you do. I think you got it. All right. Yeah. Let's <laughs> All right. Antarctica. Anything else? Antarctica. Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, but I guess oh. it is. It is so we, we have actually not, not uses in Antarctica. Yeah. It, nice. But only in the summertime? Yeah, the penguins. <laughs> <laughs> it's a seasonal group. I didn't know penguins were using OpenStack. <laughs> that's awesome news. It's a good crossover. Just the polar bears. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, there you go. Um, so we just started talking about the official group process. You want to you wanna talk about that a little bit? How, how far did you get into it? So we didn't. You didn't didn't Cabot just segued. Yeah, I just I segued, segued and then yeah, yeah, just as you came in, it was perfect. Fantastic. Yeah, it was <laughs> perfect time in your part. Right, yeah, I, I can I can jump in on that. Okay. Uh, apologies, I'm I'm late. Uh, the session I was in just now run over. I'm Tom Firefield. I'm a community manager uh, with the OpenStack Foundation, and uh, basically with the official user group process, it sounds like some you know evil ominous thing, <laughs> but really what we wanted to do was make sure that wherever you are in the world you can find an OpenStack user group that's at a high level of quality. We wanted to recognize that some of our groups are doing amazing things. They're, they're doing things like organizing conferences where 2,000 people turn up, just our, our local user group volunteers. It's amazing. And we want to basically share that experience across anyone and everyone who's uh, running a user group uh, and you know make sure that uh, we also by doing this, uh, support people and get people connected with someone like one of these fantastic ambassadors who can help provide their knowledge about user groups to mentor them to greater heights. And, uh, you know, just to tick off a few things as well, like uh, is this group just basically a marketing front for a vendor? And, uh, you know, make sure that that kind of stuff doesn't happen. Uh, but essentially, it's, it's about a mentoring process and making sure that all the information is available to the user groups and also to the people who want to attend them. I, I think uh, also as far as 
the ambassadors are concerned, they can help the user groups basically try and find speakers, try and uh, organize sponsors for venues, and try and find, try and connect you with the general open stack community at large. So uh, you don't you don't kind of feel alone in your local group. You you kind of feel connected with the rest of the world and the rest of the community. And I guess there's also an element of uh, of ambassadors getting together to maybe uh, bring together a regional event. Uh, and I I guess uh, coming to summits like this also helps. But it's 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 really Im important that there is an official user group process and there's an official m body to mentor new groups into existence and making sure that they don't get lost or they don't fall by the wayside and they they are encouraged to do regular meetups. I I I think that's the even even if the first few meetups aren't really successful, it uh, some kind of encouragement will help them keep going and find more users, find more members. So um, one, of one of the things I've proposed, and we're talking about new ways of encouraging, or maybe enabling is a better word. Um, bless you. <laughs> uh, enabling um, the marketing people that are out there, and they, they have a tendency to bump up against us at various points, and um, either want to shower us with uh, um, cash prizes, or you know, free car, you know, whatever. They they free t-shirts, they always have, uh, they generally have something, and they're driven by their team, is their, their marketing product that's based on OpenStack, which is awesome, and we don't want to discourage that, but we want to kind of funnel it in the right way where uh, the people showing up to the user group meetings aren't discouraged by saying, ah, that was just a pitch for product X, and that didn't, that wasn't about OpenStack. So, um, so the official user group process um, can be one of the ways that we, uh, uh, mentor and kind of mold that group and start to funnel in some of the energies of the people in that area that are marketing oriented so that when they do show up and they they want to promote x product and say yeah that's great but you know this is how we want to do it and we want to more pr promote open stack a little less promote your product and um, not so I guess I just wanted to say that so <laughs> uh, I think I I think there are a few other things that uh, have I come to light also. I, I think uh, each user group also we needs to manage democratically. I mean, there can't just be one organizer that, I, I, I guess eventually we need to come up with a set of parameters that, kind of, uh, gives a gives some kind of redundancy. If the main organizer kind of stops being interested, the group shouldn't fall by the wayside. Or if, uh, if if the organizer is employed by a company that kind of wants them to do things a particular way, if there are more than one or organizers, at least there is some community consensus and the agenda being pushed is something that is beneficial to the community and not just to a particular vendor. And I, I think we there might be examples out there of uh, regional groups that face these issues. And I guess, I, guess, I guess we should try and make it a part of the official user group process where we try and at least have more than one organizer as the main, main one. And I think we also need to ensure that the user group process is very inclusive. So no one should be felt left out. No one should be felt like they are being compelled to do something. You know, like, like it, it has to be, we have to be a very inviting and an open community because we, that is that is what OpenStack embodies. It, it's an open source project that 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 tends wants to be the ubiquitous cloud uh, cloud operating system for everyone, and we should try and be a ubiquitous community for anyone who wants to join. Yeah, can I? I don't want to just have it go back from Kevin to me the whole time, but um, I would say that I've had some experience, um, partially because the Silicon Valley, the whole West Coast, of the United States is super active. Um, and uh, we've had some interesting disagreements um, on how to approach things and how to, um, you know, who's right, who's wrong kind of things, um, personality conflicts. Uh, what seems to uh, work in the development community actually works in this space as well, where um, merit actually wins out. So when there is a conflict and somebody's perhaps misbehaving in a certain way, not being the most inclusive, um, that the events that they run, they people stop showing up. 
So, and it, um, it may take a couple months, mm. and it's hard sometimes when you see this happening not to say, you know, stop being a jerk. But um, it, that would be my opinion, and it's not really my place in a lot of cases to say that, even though, yeah. well, it's not my place. So, um, so by uh, advocating a certain behavior and kind of waiting until the, the merit of the group kind of um, ensures that the, the participation dies down, then actually if that person is amenable to um, being uh, more participatory and including nor more people, more organizers, it kind of happens on its own. And if they don't, then they basically get frustrated and they don't come back. It's already happened a couple of times. Yeah, on, on for a new user group, they, they heard about this process and uh, they directly asked to us, uh, what do we have to do? What do we have to do to have the support of a foundation? So uh, with this process, we can, uh, we can feel that the community want this uh, want this, uh, this uh, support. Thank you. I was just going to suggest that maybe you guys could work on codifying these uh, guidelines sim in, in a spec similar to kind of the, you know, the foundation. Nice. Yep. All right. Well, that would be helpful. That's, or is helpful. But, it, uh, but feedback on that is always welcome. It's quite new. It's only really existed for, I guess, the past six months or so. So if you go to groups.openstack.org, there's a few different documents there. One's the official user group process. One's like tips for organizers. And especially that second one, you know, would really be great if we could get some love on that. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think part of it I wrote two years ago. So yeah. it could it could definitely use some updating and some love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I still worked at Yahoo when that when that was written, so that was a while ago. And so that's that's in a Git repository. Okay. Yeah. So what's up next on the agenda? Yeah. There was example of uh, yeah, new new groups. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, uh, where's an example of a new group? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, the ambassador program help uh, user group, so you can find some document on the on groups.openstack.org. Uh, so we help few groups, so in China, uh, uh, in uh, East Europe, and uh, in uh, Africa, North Africa, we help to launch a so, uh, new uh, Tunisian user group. So it's just some few examples because it's uh, all uh, on all over con on uh, all continents. But uh, this group uh, contact us uh, to 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 know how to launch a group. So we work together uh, to um, to to give to give to the group some content, some uh, some way of organi organizing meetups, uh, communicate on the meetups. So they have created their website. And um, we we help uh, for the um, two months ago. They organized a big uh, Tunisian user group. It was inside uh, a cloud day, and uh, we we help them to to get some uh, to organize some workshop. Uh, so with some uh, some uh, partners, some company uh, in uh, in Europe, OVH, they gave they they gave they, they give them uh, some uh, some resources, VM resources for workshops. So it was uh, 160 people for uh, three workshops, and uh, and uh, we are uh, we work on the content of uh, of a workshop and give them some resources. So this is one of uh, the example of uh, ambassador uh, help for user group, and now they they, they organize uh, one one meetup every every month. So it's again uh, still uh, something like 60 or 70 people, but uh, it's one of a group. So you wanted to speak about China? Yes, maybe. Yeah. Mm, in China, we have uh, uh, the the first uh, first user group is uh, founded in Beijing. Uh, after that, we uh, because you know uh, in China, China is a really big country. So uh, there are uh, Shanghai and Xi'an. There are there are so many open stackers there. They are com complaining about that they don't have open stack events in their cities. So uh, after uh, co-work with the uh, OpenStack uh, developers, they founded their own uh, user groups in uh, in their cities. Uh, after that, I found that uh, it's really easy for them to set up uh, the events, and uh, we have the the base uh, the baseline of the event organization and the speaker uh, speak list in China. 
we have a little uh, database of that. Uh, I think it's a good progress for uh, for uh, the the station in China. Uh, after that, after these user groups uh, grown up, they have co-work with the Docker and uh, Mesos user group. They work together to have uh, more completely uh, meetups in. The, uh, in recent months, so this is an example. Uh, are you? Are they able to use uh, groups.openstack.org like uh, some yeah. others? Is yeah, they mm, because the mm, uh, OpenStack org is uh, too slow in China, so we use the meetup.com more okay. often. Yeah. Okay. So uh, <laughs> what's next on the agenda? The agenda mem memorized, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, c we can New talk features. a little bit about what we expect from the future and, and what we like to achieve. For example, the speaker list is, is one of the most important things be because it is a major problem, for example, yeah. for uh, Eastern Europe. Yeah, in, uh, it was in Nordics in Europe. Uh, in the uh, there was a thread uh, in the mailing list about uh, I don't remember it was pr f uh, Scandinavian user group or, or Swedish, and they they had some problem to to find some speaker and to find some sponsors. So we said it's good to have a sponsor, but if you don't have sponsor, uh, it's you can just make the presentation. So for for some groups, it's not easy. That depends if you have big community uh, of developers in your country, but, but some uh, for some user group from some user groups it's not easy for this. So perhaps in in the Bay it's uh, it's really easy, but uh, in France it's quite easy also because we have uh, lots of developers in Paris. But for some small groups in small country uh, it's it's not easy. So yeah, um, we we start we have started to collect some data and. Um, it will not be easy to to move the speakers uh, that depend of the region, but uh, it's possible sometimes to to make some remote sessions. So it could be a a way of uh, an easy way of uh, of, uh, of spreading the sp the, the speaker for for different user group. So we we have started few few sessions like this. But we yeah, Martin, yeah, you wanted to to build this uh, this, this this list and share this list with a process to 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 communicate so yeah i guess the place of this will be this uh, community portal and uh, yeah basically it is a very interesting question whether we support this which is the best uh, way to to listen the remote speakers or or uh, you like to see the speakers personally and there is a lot of questions regarding the travel costs and okay. yeah it's it's interesting personally i prefer the personal presence yeah, yeah, but, uh, it, it is much better to talk face to face <laughs> Yeah, it's not easy, but uh, sometimes we use our network because we, we know lots of people, so it's more easy for us to ask, uh, or can, can you, we know this company, so the speaker uh, can, can have some uh, fund with this company to move, but uh, yeah, we, we do not have a budget to, to pay for this, uh, for this travel, so, so it's not easy to, to help for this, but uh, yeah, you, we have remote session, and we can find a way of uh, finding some money for this. Uh, most of time. Yeah, I think it is a typical guerrilla action. But uh, if we could get some of this budgeting, we could arrange some road trips for the speakers. The typical example this OpenStack Day we are doing, that that the OpenStack Foundation stop is visiting uh, several uh, several events in Europe and and uh, and Israel for for example in a row, and uh, you can lower the travel cost that way. So. Uh, so I've been uh, I've had a unique problem in the Bay Area that uh, there's too many people coming at us. Um, it's a good problem to have, but it can be a little bit overwhelming where it, it kind of turns into background noise. So sometimes I'll get like a hundred marketing people will hit me in one month, and it's just uh, like ah. So um, uh, so what I started doing is um, there's a there's a lot of 
energy to be channeled there, putting it in the most positive way. Um, they all have some OpenStack related reason. That's why they're reaching out. They're usually reaching out through Meetup because that's um, a popular tool in the Bay Area and other areas as well. Um, but they're, they're also uh, reaching out because uh, maybe they looked at the speaker list here or um, um, I used to be on the board and they knew I was in Bay Area. So they, they'd find me in different ways or find the different organizers in the different way. I'm not the only one, but I'm the most active. So um, nevertheless, so um, I started working with um, some of the more active um, in the community marketing people in my area. And um, at the time I was, uh, was at VMware. So um, what we started talking about was there was really two different kind of subgroups within the, the marketing community that could really help us. Um, one was more focused on delivering um, uh, a, sing a single event where they could kind of almost like a mini conference. And um, we have this annual um, OpenStack birthday party, which has kind of turned into that. Um, and they're, they're all uh, regional or local, um, generally put on by the user groups. Not always, but generally. Um, and so that's a good focus for those people that have a marketing budget and they want to spend money. And we're like, well, you know, let's help you do that. Um, and so we can put on a really awesome uh, uh, annual birthday event. And also a little bit of side love from that is that we can um, use some of that money during the rest of the year, which is a tiny bit compared to that event for um, food and drink and stuff like that to help the, the regular um, um, user groups to go. So that, that group um, is more around sponsorship. And that's, um, but there's a separate group of people that are more focused on events. And they're usually the guys that are affiliated with the, an actual product team. And they're, um, so they're, they're more focused about um, actually um, getting uh, a certain number of events and um, a certain kind of headcount um, of uh, getting in front of uh, people's eyeballs and getting responses. So that team um, typically are trying to do something very similar to what um, they're trying to find speakers and they're trying to find topics that are similar to their product. Well, we just so happen to have this big, huge list um, of talks that are submitted every six months, uh, which the speaker list is actually derived from. Um, so the idea, and I have some guys from some of the guys from EMC are, are actively working on this with a slight EMC bent, but um, we're talking about other people joining to um, do exactly that, work with the foundation um, to actually um, start to organize that list and start to curate it and tar start to have the the um, uh, the user group organizers in different areas be able to pick from that list. It hasn't been quite organized. It's more a theory rather than implementation, but it's a, it would be kind of an add-on to the speaker list to give it a little bit more oomph and, and you know, topics and, and uh, thing, uh, availability um, potentially as well for the speakers. So, um, so this idea would be to um, harness the, the kind of the marketing energy that could um, drive some of the user groups to um, have that extra help. You know, the people that are organizers have the interest in OpenStack. The people on the marketing side have, you know, drive to kind of get their message out so we can kind of put them together and have a synergistic re relationship there. Also, I, I, I think we've seen something similar in, in the Indian user group in Bangalore because everyone wants event to have events in Bangalore. But we have a lot of other cities that we also cover, tier two cities and, uh, we don't really have as much luck finding sponsors there. So we do divert, we do do something similar where we divert some of the resources that are left over from meetups in Bangalore and do it in the other cities. We also tend to collaborate a lot with universities. And I think, I, I think universities provide a very good venue and they usually have a budget for snacks and nibbles and they've, they've, they've got a projector and, uh, and they've also got students and professors who are all, always interested in something like this. So, yeah. so where you can't find sponsors, find, try and find universities. And that, that works out very well. Uh, you, might need to, you might need to, I don't know, work a bit hard to get a response from, from them. But once you're in, I, I mean, once uh, academics uh, usually tend to favor open source pro projects anyway. So uh, it's, it's, it's a very good sync for us. I, uh, I was talking to, um, I have some really great people at HP, um, uh, Lisa Namphy, um, Rick Evans. Um, I, I left Yahoo about a year ago, and as I did, I lost my space because they weren't interested in 
you know, longer story. But um, so they, I was hosting the meetups at Yahoo for um, years, and so they um, basically jumped in with both feet and started um, helping with the, the space and started um, basically helping me, which is great. I love it. Um, but they also um, had some uh, mandate from HP to expand it and make it um, expand um, HP's uh, user group participation to more cities. So uh, as we started talking about the sponsorship idea, um, you know, how would we organize the money? Who'd be responsible? Um, how would we allocate it? Those kinds of like nitty gritty things. But also, um, you know, what if we have money left over at the end of the year? What do we do with it? So we started talking about why don't we do sister cities, like. Uh, you know, perhaps one of the user groups that um, needs some help with sponsorship, we could um, either have them self-sign up or we could uh, grant them in a way and, um, and spread the money around. And, and for some of the companies, um, that's actually what they're trying to do. So that would be aligned with their, um, their intention. So, um, so I think if, if we do just essentially build in a couple of uh, mechanisms to grab the right energy when people do show up rather than saying, well, come back, I'm not quite ready for you. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we could do a lot more cool things and maybe get this, uh, maybe not just the, the quantity of this number, but the quality of this number up, so. I mean, any questions from the crowd? Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, hi, uh, this is Sajid from OpenStack India user group. So I just wanted to know a few questions. Uh, do you guys meet only in summits, or do you have offline meetups where you interact with community manager and ambassador? And if yes, then is there any way to track what was discussed and what is the objective that has been set to for each of the ambassador? And it becomes more clear on the community side how each ambassador's what are uh, the you know to-do list and where are they now, and so that community can expect more. Okay, where the ambassadors and what are the next few things that we are expecting in next you know few months first question is this if you have offline e meetups and are you going to share the agenda with the community the second one is a very common uh, you know problem that we face and i'm sure that many people would agree on that that we uh, host meetups and the number of people they show up in the meetup are very less compared to the number of people who are SVPDS, right? And as these are free events, we cannot uh, charge. So sometimes people, they don't you know, value anything that is given for free, right? And it becomes very difficult to manage community where we stop people b uh, beyond the numbers, right? But at the end of the day, we end up you know, stopping some people, those who were genuinely interested than those who didn't show up. So how do we? You know, plus all these two issues. I I don't know if we, uh, f your second issue first. I mean, I don't know if I have a solution, except for like good banning good people. <laughs> no, good content. If you have good content, yeah. you don't yeah. come again. Percentages yeah. go up. So my experience has been about fifty percent. Oh, sorry. Uh, my experience has been about fifty percent. Um, if we don't, uh, we generally have uh, um, every other Thursday. Um, so people actually don't even a lot of probably half the people don't even check the meetup page, they just show up, because they know it's gonna be, um, there's a cadence, it's HP, Sunnyvale, show up on every other Thursday. So um, those people, that's that's usually about 40 to 50%. Um, we can get 50 to 60 people, usually just by, you know, if we change it, we have to send out like five emails to try to get all those people's attention so they don't show up when there's not one. Um, but if we, uh, we advertise, um, it, at least a couple of weeks, if not a month in advance, we're going to have a speaker and uh, make it very clear what the topic is. And even better, if it has something to do with a, uh, a hot technology, like when I bring in uh, uh, Vish when he was uh, Nova PTL, or I bring in one of the other PTLs. Uh, we, we had uh, uh, Morgan in, he's the PTL from Keystone. We had, I think, about 220 people showed up. It was, oh yeah, I guess we're done for time. But um, that was about uh, probably 80% of the people that signed up. So um, you know, it just it depends on it depends on that. Um, so uh, I'm I'm not sure what you meant about offline. Uh, I said you guys just meet in the design summit, ambassador and community manager, or do you meet yeah. offline as well? Do we have meetings? Oh oh, well, yeah. We we yeah. we we have had meeting. We have had regular meetings. I I guess. 
They're right. actually public. Um, we've they're been public, having IRC yeah. meetings. We've been a little haphazard. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, we they're actually posted on uh, meetings yeah. like any other project. And the agenda is available on the wiki. Indeed, and as we're uh, out of time for the session, right after this, basically, we're going to be having a meeting uh, in room 224, I believe, and yeah. uh, we're going to be just working through a bunch of things we need to do, but anyone's welcome to yeah. come and uh, Please come and, and join us, that. yes. So, uh, thank you very much, and uh, see, see you guys. Room number 224. Thank you.